After three months of devlogs, everything we've talked about so far is finally coming together. The undo-redo functionality, the skeuomorphic UI to create artworks, the new assets architecture, user interface rewritten with the Fata Morgana library, updated drawing tools, and upgrading to coding with GitHub Copilot. Since the last devlog, I finally debugged the code to get to the first results, so let's take a look at everything that goes into placing a pixel. First, we go into the portfolio and in the artwork section, create a new canvas. When we sign the form, an artwork document is created in the database with our character set as the author. We also need a corresponding asset document and, since we chose the canvas option, it will be an instance of the new bitmap data structure. This all happens in the database on the server, so we need to get the documents to the client as well. The portfolio subscribes to receive our character's artworks, which will be automatically updated whenever they are changed. In the new assets architecture, a loader is created that only loads the full asset document once, enabling the creation of artworks with a big amount of data. It then subscribes to receive the latest undo redo history to keep up to date with remote changes. With the asset document at hand, we now enter the drawing editor. We select the pencil, choose a color from the palette, and click on a pixel. The pencil creates a stroke action, which will hold all the necessary operations to perform and undo this action. Because this is the first pixel, we must start with an operation that adds a new layer to the bitmap. The reverse will be removing the layer, which is added to the backward sequence. Now we can finally place down a pixel. We create an operation to change pixels in a certain area. In this case, a simple one by one square that changes the color to index 2, shade 1. The reverse is to simply reinstate the previous values of this pixel, being all zeros. To save on space, we also compress the data arrays. With the action defined, we can now execute the operations. The path here splits between what happens on the server and what on the client. In the browser, we execute forward operations on the asset in memory. The first operation creates a layer in the layers array. The second one updates the values at coordinates 1, 0. The action is added to the history and the position moved forward. Now that the action is executed, we return back to the user interface, where a pixel canvas component is responsible for rendering the image. An update is signaled and the pixel canvas redraws the image, making the pixel appear on the screen. The action now also needs to be executed on the server. A request is made, supplying the action, along with additional information. We first make sure the asset belongs to our character. For synchronization purposes, the client must also match the time the document was last edited. If all is good, the forward operations are applied as they were on the client. We keep track of which fields were edited and, together with the updated history, we only send the changed data to the database. If we now have another player observing the artwork, they will get an updated history of the asset, including the new action that was just executed. They will compare the history to their in-memory version and notice they are missing this last action and therefore execute it locally. And just like that, a pixel was placed on one computer, sent to the server, updated in the database and sent back to all the clients. There are many edge cases where multiple clients are changing the asset, as well as undo and redo operations being performed in various orders. I have to finish debugging these and upgrade the rest of the tools, like the eraser and the bucket fill. The performance so far is good, but we're not in the clear yet. I am both excited and nervous. 
about how it will perform in practice when drawing bigger artworks. <laughs>